You can certainly have too much of a good thing, and frankly, just too much of anything. And I feel like this Rampage Grand Slam episode was a perfect example of that. We didn't need two hours, could have kept it one. Just because you can do a longer show doesn't mean you always should. And respectfully, Tony Khan, this show, as a result, was boring. It was boring. Maybe it's part of it that I'm programmed to only have to watch an hour of Rampage every Friday night. That could be it. Could be the culmination of a long week. It could be the culmination of you got to watch two hours of this after watching two hours of an absolutely shitty SmackDown outside of the main event. Um, yeah, that, that could be a big part of it, but sometimes less is more. Like, sometimes less is more. I mean, you don't have to feature everybody on these damn shows. Less is more. And I understand that you did this at Arthur Ashe, taped it on Wednesday. I get all that, but this really could have been an hour. You could have done three matches of note from this show. The Miro, Sammy Guevara segment, and then maybe one or two other small things. That's it. And we didn't need all this shit. We just didn't. So I know because of the AEW bias and BS that you see out there, people are going to be pumping this up like it was a great show. It certainly was not up to the standard of Dynamite Grand Slam. That's for damn sure. I defy anybody to tell me how the hell they could think that. Um, this this was quite a bit of a step down. Uh, started off okay with Powerhouse Hobbs versus CM Punk. And CM Punk learning from the political skills of Daniel Bryan saying, By God, it ain't for a title. I want to be in the highest rated segment of the night. So I'm going on first. And y'all are going to think that's a Tony Khan idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think that. You think that. Really? I was a CM Punk. <laughs> He made sure that his placement on the card on Wednesday night when it was taped was going to align with being the opening segment for Rampage. Good spotlight for a powerhouse Hobbs. You know, when we talk about hashtag black wrestling draws, um, AEW certainly so far has not demonstrated the best record of that with their all egg white wrestling asses. Um, so a guy like powerhouse Hobbs for a variety of different reasons is somebody that over the next 12 to 18 months, they need to take care of. They need to present well. They need to push because he provides a lot of things that this company needs that they really don't have a lot of right now. The match was, it was okay. It was not fantastic. For those of you that wanted to see CM Punk in his uh, trunks, you got him. What did you think? Um, the one spot I, I call out here, where Will Hobbs almost landed on his head. Don't have Powerhouse Hobbs doing shit like that. It's not going to go well. And it's not necessary. It's not called for. But a good match. Not a great match. Good match that the crowd was really into. So that certainly helped. CM Punk wins. And we know somebody up in Stamford, Connecticut would be proud of how CM Punk has come to a new place. And he is proceeding to plow through all that young talent. Ugga. But it was a solid opener. And then you go right into the trios tag match. It's Adam Cole, that pop, or no, I won't say pop, but that sing-along time with Adam Cole, the Adam Cole baby, that sounded fantastic. That sounded like big time stuff. I mean, I'm a sucker for that shit. I'm a mark for that shit you can get a crowd to pop like that, if you can get a crowd to be that loud, like you've got something there. So that started off the show badass. But as I look at this match, I, I don't, here's what I don't get about AEW. Now to the fans that are going to sit there and say, well, I don't want them to change how they're doing. No, you're wrong. You're just wrong. And you're fucking selfish. And you don't love this company as much as you pretend to, as you claim to. Why do I say that? 
because if you want them to be better, you want them to be bigger. And in order for that to happen, you have to grow and you have to appeal to different fans and bring them in. The fan base you've got now ain't going to be enough in the long term. You want to be able to continue to grow. Period. Fact. Stop pushing Luchasaurus to the fucking side for Jungle Jack Perry. Like you even saw when they made their entrance. Like they briefly put the camera on Luchasaurus and then it's all about prominently featuring Jungle Boy. Which makes sense because apparently him and Adam Cole are going to be wrestling one-on-one -on -one next week on Dynamite. But Christ all fucking mighty. Like you hear the New York City crowd chanting Luchasaurus' name. But these dumb dicks in AEW got to sit there and have him eat the pinfall. The hell is wrong with you? Everything about this is ass freaking backwards. You refuse to put over the Jurassic Expe Express against the Young Bucks for some goddamn unknown reason. I realize Adam Cole match, like, probably don't want him losing right away. You have one of the Young Bucks get fucking pinned or have a non clean finish. Or you could have Christian get pinned. And you're going to say, well, he's the Impact World Champion. Yeah, so what about it? We'd rather see CM Punk versus Sting at Bound for Glory, damn it. That should be the real main event. That's so fucking annoying. So irritating. Crowd was really hot and into this match, as they should have been. It was a good match, minus some of the dorky elite crap that you have to know going into it that the Bucks of Suck are going to cook up. But the finish, like, fuck that. But this was a match that did belong in this show. The next couple of them didn't. Men of the Year versus Jericho and Hager. I think the thing that stands out to me the most is not the post-match stuff where Jericho takes the running knee. It's where were Santana and Ortiz? Aren't Inner Circle supposed to be still a thing technically? Shouldn't they be running out to help their dudes? Are we just going to pretend like that's not a thing anymore? That's weird. That's strange. And that's the way it's kind of coming across. Um, <laughs> they said... We can't be bothered with your bullshit. But this match didn't really belong in this show. It didn't. Santana and Ortiz and the Lucha Brothers taking on the Hardy Family Office. That's their fucking name now. So that way we could use this eight-man tag to really just be something that you use to build up to a future hair match between Matt Hardy and Orange Cassidy. Like, stop! The Lucha Brothers are your tag champions, but you're making them second fucking fiddle. That's stupid. Santana and Ortiz are a really good tag team. With a guy like Santana in particular, that could be a star uh, as a singles guy. But instead, you're featuring Matt Hardy and Orange Cassidy in a storyline nobody gives a shit about. Again, this shit didn't need to be on the show. Miro attacking Sammy Guevara absolutely belonged on this show. This was great. And if you see the reaction of Ricky Starks on commentary, who was great on commentary, sitting there and popping and celebrating when <laughs> Miro attacked Sammy Guevara, like, that was good shit. Like... This was something that belonged in this show. Penelope Ford versus Anna J, on the other hand, did not. Did you not watch the last time Penelope Ford had a match on Rampage? How bad that was? Why the hell would you have another spin at it? How stupid and ridiculous. You got the video segment early in the night, well, at least you bothered to show them in some way, of freaking Thunder Rosa, Jade Cargill, and Nyla Rose, and none of them are booked on this show, so that way Vince Khan, I mean uh, Tony Khan, can sit there and feature the two blondes. And then put it all before it wins. What the hell's going on here? This absolutely did not belong in this show. This is the type of shit that belongs on Dark. And this is something AEW needs to get better about. Manage your time better, manage your talent better. A lot of the talent that they have, let's be completely clear, does not belong on a prime time cable national television show. They don't. Less than half of that roster really does, truly. So many of them are so raw or so botchy or so sloppy, slow moving in the ring, making everything look so rehearsed and choreographed like variety of reasons, not ready for primetime players. This roster is full of them. You have a good roster, don't get me wrong. And you have people you absolutely should be featuring. But think about this. People like Penelope Ford got a match, but a Brian Cage did not. That's stupid. Stupid, stupid, effing stupid, period. 
whatever. The other match that belonged on the show was the main event was a lights out match. Now it was okay. I think personally, because people love Suzuki or they love the crap going on between Suzuki and Ambrose. Ambrose, fuck. Suzuki and Moxley. Oh, look, it's Peter Griffin and the chicken fighting. Like, that's what it is. It reminds me of that. But, you know, Kingston's machine gun chops look like bullshit. Like, come on, we got to do better than this. It did not feel like a true lights out main event unsanctioned match. Like, just call it a regular street fight if you're going to do that. When you get to the point where you're calling it an unsanctioned street fight, you expect a 30 minute type of knockdown, brutal ass, bloody ass war, and you got none of that here. It was not that. Probably the highlight for a lot of people, honestly was freaking homicide appearing, which was both kind of random but sensible since they were in the New York area. But it was okay. The crowd was really into it. Eddie Kingston, the hometown kid. Like, that belongs on this show. Powerhouse Hobbs versus CM Punk belonged in the show, and I applaud the decision to put that first. Trio's tag absolutely belonged on this show. Lights out match. Most everything else on this show tonight didn't need to be there. Notice what I'm saying. You basically could have had a kick-ass one-hour Grand Slam Rampage episode. Instead, you got a dragged-out, boring, dull two-hour version of it. Tighten shit up. I understand sometimes you're going to try things, and sometimes they work, and sometimes they don't. And the fans that are going to sit there and pump this shit full of smoke and talk about how great it was, they're not helping. Not at all. Sometimes things are worth a try, and then you don't do them again. You learn from them. If you are going to insist on doing a two-hour special like Rampage on a Friday night at 10 o'clock Eastern, run into midnight Eastern, you need to come with a better game than what the hell you came with here. It looked big league. The crowd made it sound big league for sure. There was some good stuff on this show. But it was about 50% much too damn show. Got to be better than this. And now what do you do when you kind of go back to BAU next week and you can't roll out the big gimmicks and throw all the bullshit at it? I'm really fascinated to see what the viewership numbers are going to be for this and how much they might have shit-dived in the second hour. Because, you know, if you've only got like 800,000 viewers for this and you're key demo rating was only meh. like you can't be that impressed or that particularly thrilled with it I'm just saying so this was a mid show at best could have been so much better focus on the things that matter shorten up the time just because you can go two hours in this case didn't mean that you fucking needed to